Management of Vulval Conditions Introduction Vulval disorders represent a disparate group of conditions with a variety of causes affecting a particular anatomical site and may affect women of any age. This guideline offers recommendations on the diagnostic tests and treatment regimens needed for the effective management of the following vulval conditions. Vulval lichen sclerosus, vulval lichen planus, vulval eczema, vulval lichen simplex, vulval psoriasis, vulval intraepithelial neoplasia, and vulval pain syndromes. It is aimed primarily at people aged 16 years or older presenting to genitourinary medicine clinics. Care of patients with vulval conditions is best managed by a multidisciplinary approach. General advice for all vulval conditions. Avoid contact with soap, shampoo, and bubble bath. Simple emulants can be used as a soap substitute and general moisturizer. Avoid tight-fitting garments which may irritate the area. Avoid use of spermicidally lubricated condoms. Patients should be given a detailed explanation of their condition with particular emphasis on any long-term implications for the health of themselves and their partner or partners. This should be reinforced by giving them clear and accurate written information. The patient's GP should be informed. STI or sexually transmitted infection screening should be considered in all patients and vulvovaginal candidiasis excluded if the patient presents with vulval itch. All patients should be assessed for sexual dysfunction. Sexual partners. Partner tracing is not required unless screening detects a sexually transmitted infection. Vulval lichen is sclerosis. Etiology Lichen sclerosus, or LS, is an inflammatory dermatosis of unknown etiology. There is evidence to suggest that autoimmune factors may be involved in its pathogenesis and recent evidence has shown autoantibodies to extracellular matrix protein 1. There is an increased frequency of other autoimmune disorders in females with lichen sclerosus. Clinical features. Symptoms. Itch, soreness, dyspareunia if introital narrowing, urinary symptoms. Other symptoms, for example, constipation, can occur if there is perianal involvement and can be asymptomatic, but this is rare. Signs. Pale white atropic areas affecting the vulva, purpura or ecchymosis is common, fissuring, erosions, but blistering is very rare, hyperkeratosis can occur, changes may be localized or in a figure of 8 distribution, including the perianal area, loss of architecture may be manifest as loss of the labia minora and or midline fusion. The clitoral hood may be sealed over the clitoris so that it is buried. Complications Development of squamous cell carcinoma, actual risk less than 5%, development of clitoral pseudocyst, sexual dysfunction, and disease tesia. Diagnosis Characteristic clinical appearance Histology of vulval biopsy, thin epidermis with subepidermal hyalinization and deeper inflammatory infiltrate. In early disease, histology can be difficult. Management. Further investigation. Biopsy is mandatory if the diagnosis is uncertain. There are atypical features or coexistent vulval intraepithelial neoplasia or VIN, squamous cell carcinoma, or SCC, is suspected. Investigation for autoimmune disease, if clinically indicated, 
especially thyroid dysfunction. For example, T4 and thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH, as it is often asymptomatic and has been found be associated. Skin swab, only useful to exclude coexisting infection if there are symptoms or signs suggestive of this. Patch testing is rarely required and only if secondary medicament allergy suspected. The advice of a dermatologist should be sought. Treatment General advice Patients should be informed about the condition and given written information. Patients should be made aware of the small risk of neoplastic change. They should be advised to contact the doctor if they notice a change in appearance or texture, for example, a lump or hardening of skin, or if there is a major change in symptoms. Recommended regimen Ultrapotent topical steroids, for example, clobetasol propionate. Various regimens are used, one of the most common being daily use for one month, alternate days for one month, twice weekly for one month, with review at three months. It can then be used as needed depending on symptoms. There is no evidence on the optimal regimen. 30 grams of an ultrapotent steroid should last at least 3 months. Ointment bases are much better to use on the anogenital skin because of the reduced need for preservatives in an ointment base and hence less risk of a secondary contact allergy. Alternative regimens an ultrapotent topical steroid with antibacterial and antifungal, such as Dermovate NN, or generic equivalent, clobetasol with neomycin and nistatin, or an alternative preparation that combats secondary infection, such as Fusibet cream, may be appropriate if secondary infection is a concern. This should only be used for a short period of time to clear infection. Pregnancy and breastfeeding Topical steroids are safe to use while pregnant or breastfeeding. Topical calcineurin inhibitors are contraindicated whilst pregnant or breastfeeding. Retinoids are absolutely contraindicated during pregnancy and for at least two years before. They should be used with caution in females of childbearing age. Onward referral criteria those with active disease which has not responded adequately to treatment should be referred to a specialized vulval clinic. Any patient who develops differentiated or undifferentiated VIN or vulval intraepithelial neoplasia or an SCC or squamous cell carcinoma on a background of lichen sclerosus or LS should be seen and follow up in a specialized vulval clinic. Surgery should only be used for the treatment of coexistent VIN or SCC or fusion. Disease tends to recur around the scar. Follow up After three months to assess response to treatment. Stable disease should be reviewed annually, and this can be done by the general practitioner in those with well controlled disease. This must be communicated to the patient and GP by the clinic. Patients should be informed that if they notice the development of a lump, sore area, change in symptoms, or change in appearance, they should prompt medical review.